So a good day to one and all. I'm Dr. Rohit Gopinath and today I'll be talking about a very important topic in general surgery, ulcers. So ulcers are not only important from the theoretical point of view, we find that it is one of the most commonly kept short cases during clinical examinations. So we'll be discussing about the different types of ulcers, classification and different types of ulcers and uh, possibly certain types which are more common, we'll be discussing them in detail here. So going on to this topic, now the most important thing with regard to ulcers is to identify what an ulcer exactly is. It is very important that we know what exactly an ulcer is. So an ulcer is basically a break in the continuity of the covering epithelium with loss of tissue. Ulcer has four important parts that we need to know about, particularly when you're trying to describe an ulcer. So an ulcer has a margin, it has an edge, it has a floor and it has a base. Now, what exactly is the margin of an ulcer? So a margin is basically the junction between the ulcerated area and the normal skin. So this point here is called as the margin of the ulcer. So the margin of an ulcer can be regular or irregular. Now, what we see is actually the floor of the ulcer. And beneath the floor of the ulcer is the base of an ulcer. So the base of an ulcer is palpated but not seen. It is very important whereas a floor of an ulcer is seen. In between the margin and the floor, we have the edge of an ulcer. Now, there are different types of edges in an ulcer. So it depends upon the underlying condition which predisposes to the ulcerative condition. For example, you can have sloping edges which is commonly seen in healing traumatic ulcers. You can have undermined edges which is commonly seen in tuberculosis. You can have punched out edges which is seen commonly in trophic ulcers secondary to neuropathy. You can have raised beaded edges which is characteristic of a basal cell carcinoma. You can have everted edges commonly seen in squamous cell carcinomas. Now with this basic knowledge regarding an ulcer, uh, we can go on to another aspect of an ulcer which is not very commonly addressed but it is as important as the ulcer itself. Now, when you're describing an ulcer or when you see an ulcer, it is not only important that we identify the characteristics of that particular ulcer, but we also need to look around the ulcer and feel around the ulcer for any surrounding tissue changes. So one of, this, one of such important surrounding tissue change that you would anticipate in the presence of an ulcer is an induration. So an induration is a palpatory sign. You can palpate an induration. You can never see an induration, you can only palpate an induration. So it is basically thickening or hardness in that surrounding disease tissue. It is very commonly associated with malignancies, particularly well differentiated carcinomas like squamous cell carcinomas. Even long standing ulcers, for example, like you have a venous ulcer or a trophic ulcer, there can be extensive fibrosis in the surrounding tissue leading on to an induration. It is generally absent in one particular type of skin malignancy, which is a malignant melanoma. Now, less the number of induration, the more aggressive the tumor is because for induration to occur, it should elicit an inflammatory response. An extremely aggressive tumor will not give enough time for the inflammatory response to get stimulated and fibrosis to set in. So when you have less induration, it could mean that this particular lesion is more aggressive in nature. Now, abscesses can also have some degree of induration, which is called as a brawny induration. Now, Seeing and palpating an induration is very important because it gives us an idea regarding the extent of the disease. Because once we cross the area of induration, it is likely that that particular area which is beyond the induration is disease free. So knowing the extent of disease, identifying the extent of induration is extremely important. Now ulcers can be classified based on three important criteria. The first important criteria is the clinical examination of an ulcer. So the first type, according to this, is a spreading ulcer. So a spreading ulcer has edges which are inflamed in nature, irregular edges, margins, and it is edematous in nature. These are characteristically painful ulcers which have an acute onset. There is no granulation tissue. The floor is formed by a lot of slough. There is purulent discharge coming from these ulcers. And because of this infection that is there within the ulcer, the regional nodes tend to enlarge. Because there is an active infection going on in the ulcer, the person will have systemic manifestations like fever, malaise, etc. 
So these are the characteristics of a spreading ulcer. The second type of ulcer which is identified clinically is a healing ulcer. So a spreading ulcer slowly proceeds towards a healing ulcer with adequate intervention. So a healing ulcer has sloping edges. I, if you remember, I've already talked about it earlier when I said one of the uh, conditions where it gets sloping edges is a healing ulcer. The flow typically has healthy granulation tissue. There is scanty to minimal serous discharge. The regional lymph nodes will not be enlarged. There will be no features of inflammation. And characteristically, such healing ulcers have three important zones. One is the red zone that you can see here, which is the healing area of granulation tissue. In the middle is a bluish area where the epithelium regenerates. And the outer zone is where fibrosis is present. Suppose adequate intervention is not provided or the underlying condition is not treated, then we come on to the third type of ulcer, which is a non-healing ulcer. A non-healing ulcer is classically a chronic ulcer. The edges here depend upon the underlying cause. It can be punched out, it can be undermined, it can be uh, protruding out or it can be beaded. It depends upon the underlying condition. The floor characteristically has unhealthy granulation tissue with a lot of slough. There can be discharge which can be purulent, bloody or serosanguinous depending upon the underlying condition. There will be enlarged nodes which are non-tender in nature. So this picture here is a classic example of a non-healing ulcer. 